we synthesize 70 hydrocholesterol, 70 HC in the skin. The sun converts into vitamin D. But the problem is when we get old, we don't produce the oil in the skin. Very old people yeah. are always deficient of vitamin D. It's inevitable because they've got dry skin. The skin is not producing adequate amounts of 7-DHC. And therefore, it doesn't matter how long they sit in the sun, they're not going to have adequate amounts of vitamin D. Is when the... we give them a supplement, they just need a normal supplement, a normal dose. Elderly people, people with pigmented skins, dark skins, all require the same amount of vitamin D as a supplement. But obese people require additional. They require more. But the amount required depends not on age or skin colour. It depends on body weight, effectively. Got it. And, of course, it's fat-soluble, so if people had a lot of adiposity, a lot of fat cells, yeah. Yeah. The, the vitamin D would simply yeah. just diffuse into those cells. That's, that's yeah. simple physics, isn't it? And it it is indeed. Would hide away, and it's not there to be used. It comes from your skin. That's the vitamin D three. Yeah. What comes from a tablet? That's the D three. That goes to the liver. Yeah. How long does that activation process take? Several days, should we say, up to perhaps a month before the high blood levels are achieved, before full conversion has taken place. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process. There's no reason for it to be fast, yeah. because ideally we're producing vitamin D every day. So it's just a daily top-up. So you keep putting so, it one end of the pipeline, keeps coming out the other. Yeah. <laughs> if we're taking three or 4,000 units of vitamin D a yeah, day, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the blood levels are the same, yeah. that means we are consuming three, three or 4,000 4, units per day. Yeah. We require that to keep us fit and healthy. If we are very deficient in vitamin D, and we take a, sudden, a single large dose of, say, 20,000 units, which is generally speaking a week's or a week's supply. It'll take a week for the blood level to to come to, up to, to an ideal level, and that takes us into the storage form. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, the, the, the calcifidiol. Abs absolutely. Storage form. The storage and the storage is not in the fat cells. The storage is actually in the blood itself. So it's just ready to go when we need yeah, it. Yeah, ready to go. It's circulating, ready for action in contact with all the cells of the body. So when they're triggered, there's an infection taking place, they pick up more and more vitamin D from the blood, and then they, um, they, then they reprocess it and reactivate it, for, ready for action. How long does it take the cells to get the vitamin D working from taking it from, from the blood? It's more or less instantaneous. Right, so it's, it's a week or so to get the vitamin D through the liver. Yeah, yeah. Once it's in the blood, it's bang and it, it, it's there. Yeah, it is indeed. Right. Now, if we, if we take it by mouth as a supplement, yeah, and, and from the skin, it's got to yeah. go through the liver. And that's the slow process. Which takes time, yeah. And if we're very deficient, but seriously ill, it's going to be a week or so before we get the vitamin D that we need into the immunity cells. And we just get this all the time. Every shift on A&E, you'll get several patients in with sepsis. Yeah, yeah. Respiratory sepsis, yeah. urinary sepsis, or if not sepsis, severe infections. Yeah. So there's but, no point giving them high doses of vitamin D as soon as they come in. No, the high dose side doesn't work. It, the, the, the high dose doesn't get act, action any quicker. It's got to go through the liver. That's the hold-up. But we can bypass the liver... What the liver does, it, it, it adds an OH group, hydroxyl group, to vitamin D to put it into the blood. This is the calcifidiol That's blood right. storage form. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But we can give that form by mouth. Well, why on earth don't we do that every time someone gets an infection? Yeah, because the active, that part activated form, the calcifidiol, that is absorbed into the blood within about two hours. Whereas it will take up to two weeks for the raw form of vitamin D to become activated, or part activated, the calcifidiol, it takes two hours. So we have an immune optimizer yeah. that works, goes into the blood within two hours, and that is working one heck of a lot quicker than antibiotics, it is, which are going to take, yeah. even IV, they're going to take yeah. four or eight hours yeah. Yeah. to yeah. work, yeah. and that's going to work 
And, and then the cells can use that straight away. The, the white blood cells could use that in, essentially instantly. Instantaneously, yeah. So we could be getting the immune system really roaring into gear yeah. in my septic patients yeah. within yeah. two or three hours. Yeah, absolutely. And yet for some... So what we have in, in emergency departments, we have something called the sepsis six. Yeah. So we get them in and you've got to tick them all off and it's got yeah. to be done within an hour, rightly. Yeah. Yeah. So first one is oxygen. Yeah. The next one is uh, IV antibiotics. Yeah. The next one is checking lactate. Not, I might be out of order. <laughs> che checking lactate and hemoglobin. Yeah. Uh, intravenous fluid resuscitation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ch checking the urine output. And uh, I may have one other one I've forgotten. Um, but... Really, we should change that from the sepsis 6 to the sepsis 7 then. We should be giving yeah. calcifidiol. I'm sure. Because all of those things that we're doing, apart from giving the antibiotics, um, not really uh, affecting the infection. It's just monitoring the body's response to yeah. the infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Antibiotics seems... won't work with it, with, if, if the immunity is no good. We've got to have immunity. Antibiotics are... Uh, are very useful, obviously, very, very, very important. But the immunity system, the natural immunity in the body, is of vital importance. And we've got to, we've got to make sure it's optimal, that yeah. it's working properly. And the thing that keeps it from working properly is vitamin D deficiency. Now, we could come on to, you mentioned coming to hospital seriously ill. And the other thing is, one thing that makes you seriously ill is having an operation, quite honestly. A major operation means you're temporarily seriously ill. Yep. And you've got to get over that operation, and that requires defensive immunity as well. And it's been well worked out that post-operative complications are more common in people who are vitamin D deficient. So preoperatively, preoperative check when you go into hospital, preop check should include a vitamin D level of the blood. But it does For a major operation. I mean, this is... Why is it... Yeah... It's so obvious. <laughs> it, is. it is indeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, why haven't the health authorities worked yeah. this out? It's, yeah. I mean, it's... You and I believe in nature. <laughs> the creative And we've order. got to believe in nature. Yeah. We've got to optimise our natural immunity. Yeah. And we know we're all vitamin D deficient. We know we work indoors, not in the fields. We know we have a lot of clothes cover. We know we've got a lot of cloud cover. We know that half our year is... We don't produce vitamin D because it's winter. We know all these things. Let's, let, let's put it all into action. Mm. There, was, there was a photograph in the newspaper last week. It was of a little um, Afro-Caribbean, Afro, Afro black African ethnic child. And it said he was to illustrate a finding that's come from the paediatricians that... Ethnic minority children have a much higher complication rate after they've had their appendix removed. They're slow to recover, more complications. Why is this? Is it, is it something to do with racism? Well, it's glaringly obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's glaring. We know very well that these children from ethnic minority backgrounds are born deficient in vitamin D. We know well, that prob vitamin probably deficient when they were a fetus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we know very well that vitamin D is essential for optimizing immunity, and we know that post-operative complications are more common in people with defective in people with defective immunity, and also in people who are vitamin D deficient. Duh. We know it all. Let me see if I can work this one out. It's just, it's just so obvious. It is indeed. Traditional cattle herders like the Maasai, mm. other groups in Africa, Karamajong, um, that, that live in their kind of natural environment. Um, they've got very, very dark skin, yeah. but they're outside yeah. all day, every day, under the tropical sun. Yeah. Yeah. And their levels of vitamin D in that, what you could say is a completely natural human environment, yeah. is well over the 100 nanograms per uh, Nanomoles per litre, yeah. well over the 100, yeah. sort of the 150, yeah. 160 kind of range, yeah. which suggests to me that that... And that seems to the optimal level, around about 150 nanomoles per litre. But it doesn't go higher, and people do not get uh, vitamin D excess from the sun. And it's considered that any excess vitamin D in the blood 
is inactivated by the sun. The sun has a controlling effect both on the production of vitamin D and on the blood level of vitamin D. So that means if I took a lot of vitamin D supplement but was out in the sun, yeah. my levels probably wouldn't go too high. But if I took a lot of vitamin D supplement and lived indoors, yeah. there is the potential yeah. for overdose. Now, how, you, you, you've been a doctor for a long, 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 long time. Um, have you ever seen a case of vitamin D hypervitaminosis? No. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> it is staggeringly rare. Yeah. And he's always due to either stupidity yeah. or mixing up the dose, micrograms, milligrams. But, <laughs> okay, which is a thousand times different. Suppose you were in a really bad mood yeah. and you wanted to give me too much vitamin D. Yeah. So it caused high blood calcium, high yeah. percalcemia. Yeah. How much would you have to give me, probably, in terms of probability? Probably over 100,000 units a day. For? Yeah. And also with calcium. For, for, for days and weeks. With calcium. Mm. You d if you're taking vitamin D, you shouldn't be taking calcium. If you're taking a higher dose of vitamin D, don't take calcium. Because that, that can lead to problems. We don't need calcium. We're not short of calcium. There's plenty of calcium in the diet. But we need vitamin D to absorb calcium from our food. Mm. If you take K1... The bacteria in our yeah. colons are going to yeah. produce vitamin K2 for us. Yeah. It's a new thing, which I, I, I don't know an awful lot about, to be quite honest. The idea is that the, that the K2 prevents the calcium being deposited in the tissues. Well, calcium is deposited in the tissues where there is chronic inflammation. And it's not very common, actually, either. Mm. You know, you, in... In, we see occasional drain pipe arteries, don't we? Where we you do can indeed sort of see the calcium yeah. in there. That's because the arterial disease is due to chronic inflammation. The chronic inflammation is there because the people are vitamin D deficient. Yeah. You don't get the chronic inflammations yeah. when you when, when when you've got plenty of vitamin D on board. Vitamin D is an inflammatory modulator. It absolutely it does. See, when we get an in, an, an, uh, an acute infection. We had a body response, which is actually orchestrated by um, something called TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. That's orchestrating this acute response. To pro pro-inflammatory. Pro -inflammatory. Absolutely, yeah. Cytokine. But that has to be switched off. Do you remember the cytokine storm yeah. in COVID? That was TNF-alpha produced, modulated. Too much of it. And what it has to be done, it has to be switched off I'm trans it's called the macrophage balance hypothesis. The macrophages, white cells in the tissues in particular, are producing TNF-alpha and it has to be switched off to produce something called TGF-beta, transforming growth factor beta. Which is a damper down of it. A, yeah, it's a healing one. Mm. It damps it down. It's part of the, it's, yes. it's part of the specific targeted immune, defensive immunity then. So we're going from TNF-alpha to TGF-beta, and that transformation is modulated by vitamin D. So inflammation is good during an acute illness. Yeah, absolutely. Or an acute illness. So it's if, essential. If, 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 I, if I twist my ankle, I'm going to get heat, pain, yeah. redness, swelling, yeah. loss of function, yeah. <laughs> which, right. it, which is, I've taught that a few times, yeah. which is part of the necessary yeah. healing response. The blood vessels will dilate, the nutrients yeah. will come out. Yeah. Or very, and we know this is essential because if we give people um, high doses of um, hydrocortisone or yes, dexamethasone yes. Yeah. and we switch this inflammatory response off, yeah. Yeah. then yeah. The, the ankles won't get better. And worse than that, they'll probably get pneumonia and die Yeah, yeah. because yeah. we need this inflammatory response. But then yeah. we, once we've had it, from, we need to go from the inflammatory phase, yeah. done and dusted, thank you very much, got rid of the bugs, yeah. Then we need to go on to the healing regenerative phase. Yeah, absolutely. That's and to right. do that switch, yeah. if, we, if yeah. we haven't got the vitamin D to switch off the pro-inflammatory yeah. stage, then the inflammation can kill us. Yes. What's often called autoimmune disease is inflammation that's not been switched off. Chronic inflammation, low-grade inflammation, it's not being switched off. Mm. And you often find vitamin D deficiency is the basis of that.
And of course, then you get tumours. Tumours have been called wounds that do not heal. Chronic inflammation leads to cancers. The inflammation is not being switched off. And then you get a transformation into cancer. And you find chronic inflammation in the skin, in the uterine cervix, in the, in the esophagus, in the pancreas, in the gallbladder, colon. in the colon, mm. in the breast. I'm sure I've not gone through them all. Mm. All these uh, areas of chronic inflammation that lead into cancer. So it's quite reasonable to say that optimising vitamin D levels could well reduce the chances of pretty well all forms of cancer. Yeah, and perhaps not all, but most. Most, yeah. yeah certainly. I mean, yeah. the, the first research I read was colon. You were a gastroenterologist, yeah. of course. So the, the first research I read was colon cancer. Then. Yes. Well, when did you first learn about that, the, the link between vitamin D deficiency and colon cancer, do you think? Which when I first learned about vitamin D, basically. Right, so, so about ni- <laughs> late about 80s. About 1990, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or late 80s, yes, So that's 30, 35 years ago, 34 yeah. years ago, yeah. 37 years ago. And still, yes. it hasn't yeah. been implemented. Yeah, that's right. How long does it take for science to transpose <clears throat> into these bodies, yeah. getting yeah. their act together and updating their, yeah. their guidelines? It really just... You mentioned ab- ab- about the calcification in the yeah. arteries... Well, it took a long time. I'm not sure it's even appreciated now that the arterial atherosclerosis yeah. is an inflammatory condition. It was first noted by Virchow in the late 19th century. Famous and German he'd, pathologist. He described t- TAMs, T-A-M's, tumour-associated macrophages. He was a clever guy, wasn't he? Brilliant. Yeah. And everyone forgot about that. Yeah. And everybody thought it was all about cholesterol. Yeah. Well, it's not, you know, yeah, yeah. cholesterol Cholesterol is there. Cholesterol is part of the defensive mechanism for inf- inflammation. We don't, it's in the muscle cells of the arteries that the disease occurs. We don't get arteriosclerosis in veins. There's no muscle layer. We do in arteries, fundamental yeah. difference. And it's, it's chronic inflammation within the arteries that's causing the damage. And... Uh, we can switch that off with vitamin D yeah. in a good dose. And we've got to get that good dose. No good giving people a silly little dose of vitamin D. We've got to achieve the target level. 